All right, men, welcome to today's episode of Strong Men, Strong Marriages, the number one change to change your marriage. Like, what do you really need to do so that you can have a better sex life, so that you can be more attractive to your wife, so that you can have that mental, emotional, and sexual intimacy that you want? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, my name is Mike Frazier, MD. I'm a psychiatrist and marriage coach, and I help high-achieving Christian men have more intimate marriages. So some wins from the men in our program, Love, Intimacy, and Legacy. So you just spoke with the uh, the wife of one of the guys in the program, and she said this program has been like a, her words were a magic pill, you know, a magic pill for her husband to um, take and really change the way that he looked at a lot of things, looked at life, looked at her, and they're enjoying a lot more connection because of that. Uh, so that was really fun for me to, to hear. Um, guys are being able to find win-win in difficult situations, you know, with uh, with money stuff, with sex, with in-laws, with parenting, with religion. You know, it can be hard to find agreements on things that you both really feel good about, but guys are doing it. They're figuring it out, right? And having more connection because of that. And this is what we're talking about today, but guys have really kind of made that shift that we're going to talk about today, where instead of having it be, you know, asking like, oh man, how long is this going to last? Instead, just committing like, look, I'm in this for the long haul. Like I'm in this forever. This is what I'm committing to, right? That's a big win. And we're going to talk about why today. Um, enjoying family game times together. So guys are expressing that in the, in the group. You know, we do daily accountability, daily posting. Uh, that really rewires our brains in a really good way. And um, yeah, m- myself too, we've been able to just enjoy more time as a family. And that's really what I envision every morning for what is going to happen with guys that come into the program um, is that they do. Like they're just enjoying that time with their wife, enjoying that time with their kids, you know, creating these families that are great examples to the world, really. And then they're just fun, right? More fun. Um, so finding ways to connect mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and sexually and physically, right? With our wives in all those different ways. Um, so getting, this is a this is a really good one, guys. just been in here a really short time. But getting texts of gratitude and kindness from his wife that are kind of like not as characteristic. You know, they're kind of out of character uh, for her. Um, so that's a big win, right? He's, he's seen appreciation more than he expected, right? Because he's really embracing some of the changes. Um, So for me, you know, a couple weeks ago, I did a podcast on kind of a disconnection time my wife and I were going through. And so yeah, kind of update on that. You know, um, one of the big things for us was uh, in our kids and the the future, you know, we have a a son who's 16 now. And, you know, my wife's big concern was that they felt like they didn't really feel comfortable um, not feel comfortable. They didn't think that I really wanted them around after they kind of left the house. Um, and that's, it's really not what I want. Um, you know, I would love for them to live close and to, you know, for us to enjoy meals together, you know, them to have their own lives, but to be involved, right. Be at the kids' soccer games, their kids' soccer games, our our grandkids, uh, if they play soccer, I guess, (laughs) but, you know, just be involved in their lives and have them close. That would be really my ideal and my wife's too, you know, and, we're both okay if they move somewhere else and we just, you know, we travel and see them and that kind of thing. Um, but my wife was like, you really want that? I was like, yeah. And she was like, well, I don't think the kids believe that. And I wasn't sure. Um, I thought maybe she was overreacting, but you know, we came home from that and I told her like, okay, like every day I'm just going to let the kids know that that's true. Um, and I did. And they were all shocked. Like they were all surprised that I wanted them to be around. And you know, that was a real wake up call for me. Um, cause it is what I want. And so now just being really intentional about letting them know and it's really lightened the mood in our house in a really positive way. Um, so yeah, you know, that conflict that we had, it's, it's not fun, you know, in the moment to have those conflicts, but you know, when you have intimacy, meaning you share those things that are hard for each other, you know, you can grow from them. And, uh, you know, I appreciate my wife being able to be honest about those things and also kind of uh, owning her side too. You know, I was telling her, look, you know, there's another side to this. If you're overly clingy to them, um, you know, that, that can cause problems too. And she was able to recognize, yeah, I know. I think maybe I went too far that way and you went too far the other. We're trying to correct for each other. So, I mean, really we're on the same page. It was just figuring that out and really, um, she was right with her feedback. Like the kids didn't believe that. And I feel bad about that. Um, so now yeah, time to fix that. And so it's been really good, really good. Um, 
So again, like you can work through difficulties, not that you're never going to have difficulties when you learn these skills of trust, communication, intimacy, like you're always working on them, you're always building them. Okay. So when a lot of, when guys come into the program, they're trying to do a few different things. So one is improve their sex life, right? It's not there. They want it better. Um, they're trying to regain trust after infidelity, either theirs or their wife's, you know, they're trying to work through that. Um, or just kind of win their wife back. They're talking about separation. They're talking about divorce and you don't want that. You're trying to have that not happen. Um, so what guys do, right, is they'll maybe listen to the podcast or read a book or something and they'll start making some positive changes. Okay. And, and even guys that come into the program, a lot of them start here, which is fine. You know, it's understandable. Um, so you make some positive changes and you're kind of hoping, right? You're expecting your wife to notice. You're expecting, you're expecting her to respond positively. But the other thing that you're doing, and a lot of guys don't really realize this, but kind of subconsciously, you sort of have a time frame on this. You're kind of like, okay, you know, I'm going to make these changes and she should respond within a day or a week or, you know, maybe a month at the very longest, you know, if I can kind of maintain these changes for a month, like for sure, you know, she should you know, she should know by then, like she should respond by then. Right. And so guys do this, right. They make these changes and then she doesn't, right. She doesn't respond in that time frame, and then they get frustrated, right. They feel like giving up or, you know, they, they get mad, right. They go back to their old habits maybe. So really this is just another mosquito cycle uh, manifestation. <laughs> okay. So you do these nice things for your wife, right? You're making these changes. You're, oh, like I am being more trustworthy. I'm keeping my word. Yeah. You know, I'm communicating better. I'm listening to her better. You know, I'm doing these things. Right. Um, and then you're like, okay, time for you to notice, right? I'm working hard here. So you need to pay attention, right? You need to start like giving me attention, giving me appreciation, giving me affection, giving me sex. Cause look, I'm making these changes, right? So notice, and you need to change now. I change now. It's your turn to change, right? But then she doesn't, okay? And then the the mosquito cycle gets exposed, right? Because you're getting frustrated. You, you're not getting what you wanted from her. And so then you explode, you get mad at her, or you escape, or you just like feel totally depressed and hopeless, right? And then, yeah, I mean, if you get mad or you escape, like you kind of come back and you, you start trying to make those changes again. Or if you're just kind of depressed and hopeless, maybe you just, you're not really making those changes, but you're just kind of down, right? I mean, you're not doing like, you're not like trying to hurt her, but you're just feeling down and depressed and like, you know, you know whatever I do, it doesn't really matter because, you know, nothing's going to change. So, you know, why even try, right? And it's normal to feel this way, right? It just is not attractive, right? Because <laughs> when you have that time frame, like even if it's subconscious, right, you kind of have a time frame on it, you start to become impatient, okay? You want changes now, or you want them within this certain time frame. When you don't hit it, you're like, okay, well, you know, that's not fair. So you feel impatient, or again, you feel hopeless because you're like, man, you know, making these changes, nothing's nothing's happening. She's not noticing. Um, you know, what's the point? Right. So here's the thing: impatience and hopelessness, they don't feel very good to you, right? Most people don't really like feeling impatient. They don't really, they certainly don't like feeling hopeless. The other thing is these feeling states, they're not attractive, right? If you're an impatient person and you're like, come on, like, come on, Elizabeth, you need to start having sex with me. Like, look at the changes I'm making. Okay. Is that going to make her more or less likely to have sex with me? Less, right? Or if you're like, oh yeah, you know, I made these changes, but you never noticed. So, you know, but I just don't see the point, right? Is she going to be more attracted to me or not? Right, less attracted to me. She might, maybe she feels like she has to take care of my emotions, right? Maybe she does care to take me a little bit, but even if she does, like she's doing that out of guilt and not out of being attracted to you. Okay. So, and again, the main issue here is they expose the mosquito cycle, right? Because they expose that your intention is not to change you. It's actually to change her. Okay. That's the main problem here. Everything about the mosquito cycle, right? It's manipulative because the, the goal is change her, right? So you're making these changes. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. Oh, she's not noticing. So automatically when you start feeling that, you know your intention to change is to change her, okay? It's to change her behavior towards you. It's to make her trust you. It's to make her do something, make her happy, make her give you attention, make her have sex with you, right? When the result that you want is for her to change, it's manipulative, right? And that's what the mosquito cycle is in its essence, okay? So if you're becoming impatient, you know 
that you're impatient with her, right? Impatient that she's not, you know, appreciating your changes enough. You know you're being manipulative. Okay. You start feeling hopeless. Again, you know that your changes are to change her, right? Because it does become hopeless. If your only intention is that she reacts differently and then she doesn't, it does become hopeless because you can't control her, right? And the more you try, the more you get frustrated, the more it pushes her away, right? So what do you do instead, right? So we understand now and kind of honing in on one specific part of the mosquito cycle, which is this kind of unconscious or subconscious time limit on how long you're going to kind of make these changes. Okay. So number one change you need to make is to adjust your time frame, right? You want to make it an infinite time frame. Okay, look, this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm changing, right? And the other thing is not doing it to get her to do something, but you're just doing it because that's who you want to be, right? And not on some time frame, just that's what I'm this is what I'm gonna do forever, right? Doing it for the long haul. That's a phrase the guys in the program have been using lately. I like it, right? Just that, you know, that's the time frame. I'm doing this forever, right? The way, as a Christian guy, what we're doing is just we're on a journey to become more like Christ. That's what we're doing here. Okay, that's it. Right, we're in it forever. Right. One of the phrases I like here comes from the book "Driven" by uh, Douglas Brackman. So you know that we're okay as we are now, and we're we can be better. Right. We're okay as we are now because, like, if we believe in Christ, we believe He has saved us. Right. He's redeemed us. He, his grace covers us. Right. So we're really are okay as we are now. Can we get better? Yeah, it's both of those, right? We kind of see Christ ahead of us and, you know, we're walking with him, walking towards him, you know, growing, becoming more like him each day, okay? So again, okay as we are now and improving, right? And we're going to be doing that forever and that's fine, right? There's not a problem with that. So, you know, again, adjusting that time frame, it's really powerful because immediately it starts relaxing your anxiety, right? Because if you're like, okay, like I need to do this for a month and then, you know, she better respond, you know, you're kind of, you're anxious, you're being kind of manipulative, right? All of that. You just kind of feel unsettled versus when you say, hey, like, doesn't matter how long it takes, like I'm doing this. Feels solid, feels strong, does not feel anxious, right? The other thing, it drops manipulation. It's not about manipulation now. It's just like, yeah, hey, you know, I need to change and I'm going to, right? Doesn't matter how long it takes. You know, it's not about changing you. It's just about me committing to this, right? I'm going to keep improving myself forever. I'm going to keep connecting with God every day forever. That's just who I am now, right? So it's not manipulative, right? You're acting in a way that you just want to be a better choice for her. Hey, you can choose me if you want, right? I haven't been a good choice. Now I am going to be, and I'm going to keep working on that forever, right? I'm going to bump into difficulties. I'm going to go back to my old ways sometimes, but this is my commitment, right? This is my progression forever. Okay. Now here's the weird part, right? Is when you actually make this commitment, when you kind of let go of that manipulation, when you just kind of say, look, yeah, I'm in this forever. You know, you feel better. And again, the paradox is it actually speeds up the process of her feeling safe with you. Okay. That is the strange part about this, but it really is how it works. That when you feel settled in your decision to improve yourself, right? It, the other day I was on a call with a guy and, you know, he, he was close to divorce and, you know, at the end he was like, oh, you know, I don't know if I want to do it because I, I don't know, I don't know if, if you know, if it's going to work. I don't know if my, I don't know if my wife's going to come back. And so I asked him like, hey, what do you think your wife would think if she heard you say that? Right. And he, he recognized, he was like, yeah, you know, she'd probably say that it wasn't real, you know, that I wasn't doing this for the right reasons, that I was just doing it as a manipulation. I was like, yeah, that's right. So versus if, you know, he came and he said, look, I'm committed to this, you know, maybe she won't choose me, but I've got to be a better choice for her. I've got to be a better choice for my kids. You know, even if we get divorced, I got to do that. You know, she might still be mad, but really in the back of her mind, she's respecting that, right? Because she knows, like, if it's about her, it's not going to last, right? It can't last. Because, um, again, like, if you get her back, your motivation's gone. If you're trying to change to get her back and she comes back, 
your motivation is gone and you start acting in the negative ways again. Versus here, when you say, look, I'm committed to this, I'm committed to this forever. It's not about you, it's about me, right? You feel strong, you feel settled, and you're much more attractive and it speeds everything up. Again, it's the opposite of how most things work, but this is how relationships work. Okay, commit to change for you, not for her, right? Commit to change forever, not for a short time, right? And then you think, well, it's going to take forever now. But actually what happens is it takes much less time when you make that internal commitment because your feeling state changes, you become stronger, you feel less, more settled, you feel less anxious, and you're not being manipulative, right? So it just speeds everything up. It lets, it lets trust come back a lot faster because you're being trustworthy. Okay, it's much easier for your wife to trust you if you say, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm committed to doing this forever. I might make some mistakes sometimes, sure, but, you know, this is my commitment. I'm on this path forever, no matter what. No matter what you choose, no matter what you do, like, this is my path, right? Especially if you're a Christian guy saying, like, connecting that to Christ and following him, you know, you just can't lose because you already feel good, you already feel solid, and it just so happens you're much more attractive to your wife. Okay, so... Sometimes it can be difficult to just like immediately go to this like long haul or infinite place. And a lot of guys in the program, we kind of work through this transition. So like, I like to remind guys, hey, listen, how many years has it been that you've had problematic behavior towards your wife? Okay, pretty much everybody that comes in and think about this yourself, right? Like basically it's as long as you've been married. So if you've married 10 years, it's 10 years, seven years, it's seven years, 30 years, 30 years, right? So you've had like, years of negative problematic behavior. So what I tell these guys is, hey, you know, would it be reasonable for your wife to think, well, you need to have that same amount of time of positive attractive behavior for me to really trust you? Okay. Probably would be, right? It probably would be reasonable for her to think that, right? So that can sometimes just help check you, right? And help you think, oh, like maybe you know, I have been changing for the last couple of days, you know, maybe, yeah, that is a little bit too soon to think she's going to really think this is a permanent change. And, you know, it's just a good check for us. Okay. The other thing you got to think about is how serious was the damage that she did, right? Now, some guys will, will mistake that still think that they're, the damage that they've done is actually not that much. And, you know, their wife should just get over it. And so that in itself is like a big problem that we look at. <laughs> Like really try to understand how we're hurting our wives. Um, so, and like we do an apology letter, that's a big part of it is like seeing, yeah, I really did do some damage here and understand, oh, like, yeah, no wonder you wanted to pull away, right? So in other, so in some cases, guys don't quite get it and we have to like really help them see it. In other cases, it's obvious, like you had an affair, right? That's obvious. Um, so just think like how, how bad was the damage done? If... If you're in one of these positions, right, where you're hardly having sex, where you are, you know, really, um, you, you know, you had infidelity, uh, you are looking at separation, like you've done serious damage. So I like to think about like just it's like, it's a serious injury, right? It's like you broke a bunch of her bones. So if you so don't think it's going to heal overnight, right, or in a week, okay? Like you've got to do this forever right like you've got to understand that's going to take time to heal okay major bone breaks you, you want to think like this is a months to years recovery time okay so it's a serious injury it's actually in a body cast right months to years to recover okay so and then stepping that up to like eventually you have to understand these changes are for me and they're forever right Again, that's going to lower your anxiety and all of that. So in summary, if you're feeling hopeless or you're feeling impatient, you're like, man, my wife, she's just not seeing my changes. You just remember that you are in the mosquito cycle and you're trying to change her instead of changing you. And that time frame, again, this is kind of like a, a nuanced part of the mosquito cycle. If you have that time frame, you start becoming manipulative. You start becoming impatient and you start becoming unattractive. All right. So. Again, commit to that process of self-improvement forever, right? And do it for you and not for her, okay? This is who I want to be. This is the type of husband I want to be, right? This is the type of father I want to be. I want to follow Christ, right? That's, how, that's what I'm doing, you know? And it's up to you. You can choose to stay with me. You cannot, you know, that's up to you, but I'm committed to this, right? 
and I choose you because you know, I like you, I think you're great, <laughs> right? So remembering, you know, commit to that process of self-improvement and you are, you're okay as you are now, you really are, right? You're a son of God, you're created in God's image, you are valuable as you are. And you're also going to improve. Like Christ's grace, it covers you, you're okay, right? You're all right as you are. And you're gonna keep improving, right? Because it's fun. It's more fun to improve than to stay where you are. And it's definitely more fun than to get worse, right? So, you know, this process of improvement is just what we're meant to do. You know, we're meant to grow, we're meant to improve. And so we're committed to that, right? And you're okay as you are, and you can improve. So this commitment, right, it rebuilds trust, it rebuilds safety. And again, the paradox is when you commit to doing it forever instead of on a time frame, it just goes way faster, right? That's again, the paradox. The trust rebuilds faster when you make this commitment to do it forever and don't put a time frame on it. Okay. So again, this is a big part of rebuilding trust and safety because you're not being manipulative. Your promises to yourself and to God. It's not really about her, it's about you improving you and committing to that forever, not having the time frame so you get impatient and anxious and all of that. Um, so that's re restoring trust, it's restoring safety. So then we add on to that getting better at communicating and listening really well, expressing yourself really well. We add onto that fun, flirting, passion. So now you've got that marriage where you enjoy time together. You're looking forward to it. You know, just today, my wife said she's going on the, on the prices, right? Um, she really doesn't want to go on it, but, <laughs> but like, uh, she doesn't want to be like called up. Uh, she's there with a friend. So we've been just like sending funny texts back and forth and just letting each other know we love each other. And like, you can have that. You can totally have that where you're looking forward to these interactions with your wife, um, you know, enjoying that mental, emotional, and sexual connection. You can get there, right? Demonstrating that great example to your kids, creating that legacy of love, right? So this is what we learned how to do. The way you have to do that, you have to rewire your brain, right? Your brain is used to certain patterns of thinking, feeling, and acting that are negative. They're unattractive, right? They're the mosquito cycle. You need some help to see them. You pretty much can't see them on your own. Yeah, like even this last one, right? My wife was kind of my coach in this one. She pointed out, hey man, like what you're doing, it's coming across this way. And I didn't see it. I really didn't, but she did. And so I took the correction, right? We all need outside help, okay? So get some outside help, right? And I'd love to help you. If you're a high achieving Christian man who is ready to you know, commit and really adjust his thinking and have daily coaching and accountability to really adjust those patterns, Okay, identify the negative patterns, replace them with new ones, repeat them until you can't get it wrong, until that's the new habit. Your brain at that point is rewired. We do 90 days, not because I think everything should be better in 90 days, right? <laughs> from this from this um, podcast, you understand that. But we do 90 days because it's about 21 to 60 days to build a habit. And so in 90 days, that should really be ingrained in you, right? And then after that, I do have some continuity stuff because, yeah, I, you know what? we're in this together and we want to, you know, build a life where we are, you know, being those examples to the world. And so, yeah, I do have a continuity program now for my graduates and uh, excited to, to get that started. So, but for you, right, if you are ready to change your thinking, feeling and acting from negative, unattractive to positive, attractive, repeat it till you can't get it wrong, get the coaching accountability to help you get there. Come join us. Love intimacy and legacy. Love to have you there. Guys are getting great results better than ever. And come on over and let's do it. Head over to strongmenstrongmarriages.com. Click on work with me. There's also links in the show notes. And you fill out an application that we'll review on the call. All right, men. So stay strong. We will see you next episode.